The Royal Enfield Himalayan 450 came out at Eichma a couple of weeks ago and got a whole bunch of adventure riders excited about a 40 horsepower 450cc single finally available to the masses. And it got me thinking about unicorn bikes, motorcycles that are seriously capable on and off road. Essentially, these are bikes for riders who want one bike to do it all, and Royal Enfield took a crack at it with this new 450. But what exactly are the other bikes that fit this mold, and what constitutes a unicorn anyways? In this video, we'll come up with a working definition of a unicorn and go over motorcycles that fit that definition, their capabilities, strengths, and weaknesses. So stay tuned, and if you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with friends. So what is a unicorn motorcycle? Everyone will have their own definition, but for me the qualities that a unicorn must have are simple. It has to have the widest possible range of uses in one motorcycle. From touring cross country on the highway to shredding single track with your dirt bike buddies, and everything in between. Mind you, no bike that can tour on the highway is going to be as good on the trails as a dirt bike, and no bike that can handle hard enduro is going to be great on the highway. But we're looking for a bike that can do both possibly, not perfectly, so we'll have to allow for some shortcomings. However, some types of motorcycles I can eliminate right off the bat. The current crop of middleweight adventure bikes, including my own Yamaha Tenray 700, are just too heavy. The KTM 890 Adventure is Aprilia Touareg 660 and so on, while being very good pavement motorcycles, are just too heavy to be good enough off-road. Which may incidentally be the major flaw of the aforementioned Royal Enfield Himalayan 450, more on that later. I have personal experience, having ridden my T7 on a dual sport ride, and while the Yamaha did very well for its size and weight, it was the slowest and hardest to ride bike of the bunch, frankly scary. Another class of motorcycles I'll also eliminate is the 500cc class of bikes with dirt bike service intervals. These are the opposite of the big middleweights. The KTM 500EXC and its sibling the Husky 501 Enduro, which weigh under 250 pounds, are some of the most off-road capable road legal motorcycles ever built. But bikes in this category also require oil changes every 600 miles or 1000 kilometers, and that's totally impractical if you're wanting to tour cross country. Having to change oil every two days on a long trip is not my idea of fun, and riding a 250 pound motorcycle on the highway sucks as well. It's terrifying. So I've narrowed this list down to six motorcycles that are commonly available in Canada and the United States, my stomping grounds, and have an easily accessible dealership and service network and a seventh one that is an exception to this rule but demands attention. All of these bikes are singles, twins are too heavy, and all of them except for one weigh under 400 pounds wet. Most of them are reasonably priced and extremely versatile. With these motorcycles you should be able to keep up with your buddies on GSs and ride every type of trail except for hard enduro. Since I've already mentioned it, let's talk about the Royal Enfield Himalayan. A 40 horsepower 450 single has for a long time been the holy grail of the serious adventure rider who imagines themselves racing the Dakar Rally. And I myself have made a video pleading with Honda to bring us a 450 Rally. Is this Royal Enfield that bike? No. It is a very nice motorcycle that will meet the needs of 98% of its riders, check out my video on this bike in the top right corner. However, at 432 pounds wet, this bike is the heaviest motorcycle I'll mention today. To be fair, if you took off that luggage rack and tank guards which none of the other bikes I'll talk about have, it may get down close to 400, but it will still have the least sophisticated, shortest travel suspension of these bikes as well as the least ground clearance and it will still be the heaviest. So a nice, reasonably priced, well equipped adventure bike that is highway capable and pretty good on dirt? Yes. Would I ride this on a dirt bike group ride? No. But I would ride the Honda CRF 300L Rally. In fact, I did ride my wife's bike on all but the most difficult trails and it did alright. This thing weighs 339 pounds wet and has over 10 inches of suspension travel and ground clearance, a 12.8 liter tank and very good weather protection for a decently reasonable price, 6.500 US and 8K Canadian. It looks pretty badass too, like a proper rally bike. It isn't a proper rally bike, just to be clear. It has about 27 horsepower, not enough to seriously tour on the highway in my opinion, and that long travel suspension is too soft for high speed desert running. 
However, if you slow down and adjust your style of riding, it is a very reliable and inexpensive unicorn that you can upgrade over time. And there are plenty of suspension and power mods available to soup this bike up to where it should be. The Kawasaki KLX300 is a motorcycle with similar power and less weight than the Honda Rally, just over 300 pounds wet. This bike has decent suspension, better than the Honda, but does not have the weather protection or the big tank. It's essentially a good trail bike that can keep up on the highway. It costs a bit less than the Honda Rally, but would take more of an investment to make it into a proper unicorn capable of comfortable long distance touring. Which brings us to this bike's final flaw. Because it's not available in as many markets as the Honda CRFs, it just doesn't have the aftermarket support. You can find accessories for it, but not quite as easily and in less variety. Check out my full review of this bike in the top right corner. So while the 300cc 4-stroke trail bikes are good off-road choices and very reasonably priced, on pavement they lag behind the big bore singles, the first of which is another Honda, the XR650L. This is essentially a massively overgrown dirt bike with state-of-the-art technology if you take a DeLorean back to 1993 because this bike hasn't changed in 30 years. The TLDR, it's carbureted, air-cooled, has 44 horsepower, 38 pound-feet of torque, a 346 pound wet weight, a 5-speed gearbox, has 11 plus inches of suspension travel, 13 inches of ground clearance and an enduro-like 37 inch seat height. Basically, a huge but very off-road oriented dual sport with more than enough power to cruise the highway. The two big drawbacks to this bike are the lack of a cush hub which could lead to early chain and sprocket wear on pavement, and a weak front sprocket which usually needs replacing. This is a very capable motorcycle with a huge single and a reasonable price, 7000 US dollars. Unfortunately, this one's no longer sold in Canada but is still available in the US. A motorcycle very similar to the XR650 but with some extra advantages, among them still being on sale in Canada, is the Suzuki DR650. This air-cooled 650 single has almost the exact horsepower and torque figures as a Honda with 44 and 37 respectively, and this bike still weighs well under 400 pounds wet at 366, but it is lower with a 34.8 inch seat height and a factory lowering kit that drops it further than that if you want. Along with that comes a lower spec suspension which is on the soft side but still has over 10 inches of travel and ground clearance. Don't expect the big DR to be as good off-road as the Honda XR650, but it's pretty good and will make it through some technical trails without a problem. This bike has been around since 1990, like the Honda retains its carburetor and 5-speed gearbox and like the Honda costs 7k US. Get this though, in Canada it only costs 7200 so we're getting a sweet deal for a cheaper dollar. A plus of its age is the fact that there is a mountain of parts and accessories available which can turn this thing into a lean mean trail machine if you're willing to spend the dough. So weirdly, the XR and DR are two bikes from the early 90s which still managed to do a better job of being unicorns than most modern motorcycles. Go figure. Because they're grandfathered in and would never in a million years pass modern emissions, they can't be changed which is why they're not fuel injected or sporting ABS. This precludes them from being offered in many markets around the world. But North Americans, lucky us, still have access so grab yours ASAP before they're gone. Take the Honda if you're tall and want more dirt cred and take the Zook if you like lighter trails and a cush hub. So there are a lot of bikes that can give you a unicorn experience and different ones do different things well. But there is one that stands above them all, that is truly better than all the others everywhere. And that is the KTM 690 Enduro R and the Husqvarna 701 Enduro and Gas Gas 700, which are basically the same bike with a few different parts and different badging because they're built by the same company. We'll count them as one bike for simplicity's sake. Why are these the best? The most power, over 70 horses, the most tech with switchable modes and maps, the best and most adjustable suspension, best brakes and about 350 pounds of wet weight. Yes, this level of high performance may sacrifice some reliability, you have a better chance of getting home on your Honda than a KTM, but for this performance, there literally is no comparison between a 690 Enduro R and a Honda XR650. Including price, the KTM is almost twice as expensive, 13.5k US. But truthfully, it is twice as good. However, it is not for beginners. 70 horsepower on dirt is not for the faint of heart and you better have excellent throttle control. 
But if you want the best, this is it. And this, and this. I'd take the gas gas because I like red. But wait, because we do have a bonus unicorn. At the beginning of this video, I made a stipulation that I talk about established brands with strong dealer networks, and here I am bringing up the Kove 450 Rally. A literal Dakar bike that I'd have to drive 2000 kilometers to pick up from a dealership in Manitoba. I've been begging Honda to build this bike for ages, but it took this Chinese company to bring it to us. It took a guy with a dream and a passion for dirt riding and racing to take the chance, and by all accounts, his first attempt is a very good one. Yes, there are idiosyncrasies, but we're talking about a 50 horsepower, 360 pound wet rally bike that you can race out of the crate. Race suspension, 38 inch seat height, that's the same as my enduro bike. 8 gallon, 30 liter fuel tank that sits low on the sides for weight centralization, all for 9,000 US dollars. KTM made a 450 rally replica before, 70 of them, and they cost 56,000. So yes, there is no dealership network to speak of, but this bike has gotten so much press that that may grow fast. And yes, reliability is unknown, but I hear mostly good things from your viewers. Apparently the power feels underwhelming, which may be a good thing. This is a motorcycle that has to survive the world's toughest multi-day race, and at last year's the car rally, all of them finished. You have to soften the power a bit in order to save the engine. This motorcycle requires oil changes every 2 to 3,000 miles and valve checks every 5,000 miles. Not bad for a race bike. I remember in the mid 80s, people were calling Japanese cars cheap, unreliable junk. In the 90s, it was Korean cars. Hyundai was poorly thought of, and Kia was a punchline to a joke. Now they're both established brands with decent reliability ratings from Consumer Reports. Things change. Finally, if you don't want to buy a Chinese motorcycle because of the questionable actions of the Chinese government, I get it. Your moral objections are valid. However, everything is made in China these days. Shop on Amazon or in any store and you're buying Chinese goods in almost every purchasing category. And quite frankly, it's not like Japan, Germany, Austria, Italy, Great Britain or the United States has never done anything questionable. But those questionable government policies had nothing to do with the big four, BMW, KTM, Ducati, Triumph or Harley. Those brands are produced by enthusiasts who bring their bikes to market because of their passion for the sport and yes, profit. And that's the case with Kove. Would I buy a 450 rally? I'll give it a couple of years and watch the company closely. If they stick around, stand behind their products and open up a dealership in the Toronto area, then I will seriously consider it. It's 100 pounds lighter than my Tenere 700. So there it is, a list of six commonly available big name bikes and one upstart to start your quest for your own unicorn. What do you think of these motorcycles? What are your favorites? Did I miss any? Please let me know in the comments below. Ride safe and may the spokes be with you.